In our last video, we learned how to estimate costs using the high-low method. In this video, we're going to learn how to estimate costs using the scatter graph method. So let's get started. Now, I've copied the data down just to be right beside the graph. I've also got a copy of this worksheet and the graph paper and the whole thing uh, for you to use. But let's do the scatter graph method. Now remember, we're just going to graph this data and remember what our graph needs to look like. They're always the same in a cap. Our y-axis is our cost axis. Our x-axis, and remember y is just up and down, our x-axis, our left to right axis, is our activity level. And in this case, the activity level is the number of customers. So. Let's graph this, and to start, we're going to need to draw a good axis for our graph. So I can see there's 600 customers in total. Now my graph, I think, is 20 by 20. So 600 customers means I can actually count up, if I make, uh, I, I just got to do a bit of mental <coughs> arithmetic here. But I believe uh, if it's 20 by 20, why don't I make this graph just 12 wide? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to make this point 600, and I'm going to make each point in between 50s. Now, I want to start at 0, always on these charts, and go to the maximum point. And, and you know, you could keep going. I could have made it bigger, I suppose. But I, I want to have a nice even number. So I know, let's see, this will be 100. 200, 300, 400, 500, and there's 600 there. Um, and let's do our y-axis. And our y-axis peaks out at 2,600. So our cost peaks out at 2,600. Um, again, I know there's 20 lines. So hmm, I can't do 100 per line. I'm going to have to do 200 per line. So Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to call this line 2600. And then each line in between is 200. So I'm actually going to have 200. I'll just do every second one. 400, 600, 800, 1200, uh, 1600, 2000. Mm -hmm. And right below 2,600 is 2,400. So I've drawn a good axis. And that's really a key to these scatter graphs. You can't skip lines. I know some graphs, I look at the graph, and the person will go like 0, and then they'll kind of draw a squiggly line there and say this is 50,000, 51,000, 52,000. You can't do that. If you do that, you're going to mess it up. You have to draw a full axis from zero without skipping anything on the axis. So if you do one of these little things, squiggly lines, and you go 50, 51, well, no, because there's going to be 49, 48, 47, 46. It wouldn't fit on the graph. So you have to draw a graph that fits your data, or you're very likely going to mess something up. So uh, trust me on that. Just draw a graph that fits everything. So we've got a good graph. We've drawn a good axis. And the axis is actually the trickiest part. Now I just got to chart my data on here, and let's start with February, January. January is 500 and 2250. So there's 500. I'm going to go up the line. 2000. 22 is right here, so 2250 is right there. Um, okay, let's see. 400, 2200. Okay, so there's 400, 2200 is right there. Uh, 450, 2200. Okay, well, 450 will be right there, and 2200 will be there. 600, 2600. Well, it's the outer limits of my graph. There we are. Uh, 300, 1950, 300, well, oops, 300, there's 2000, 1950 is going to be right there-ish. Um, and 350, 2250, well, 350's there, 2000, 2200, 2250 is going to be about there. Oh, 
There we are. Okay, so I've plotted all my points. And, you know, I've done a reasonably good job, I think. Those are the points that I need to plot. Now, here is the devil of the scatter graph. This is the hard part of the scatter graph. You've got to draw a straight line that cuts through the middle of this data. What does that line look like? I don't know. It's also called the visual inspection method because you look at it, you're visually inspecting it. I'm looking at the line, I'm looking at those points rather that don't seem to make a line. I can't do a connect the dots between them. I've got to draw a straight line that cuts through what I feel is the heart of this data. So I've just got to draw a straight line that, that cuts through this data. Now mathematically we can do this. It's called a regression model, a linear regression. We'll do that in the next video, but here we're just doing it by visual inspection and we're drawing a best fit line. It's hard for me to do on the screen because I don't have a ruler. I'm going to do my best. Please, please help me. Uh, I hope this is a good line. Let's see. I just want to... Uh, okay, here we go. Oh boy. There it is. There's my line. Actually, I did a really poor job. I'll tell you why I did a poor job. It should have been angled a lot lower. Maybe I'll undo it. Let's try a different version of this. Uh, Got to get my pen out again. Take two. Uh, let's try that. Oh, that was even worse. I missed it. <laughs> okay, well, last try. I'm going to take whatever I draw here. Uh, that was ridiculous. There it is. The perfect line. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I've drawn the perfect line. I'm so proud of myself right now. Uh, it's not perfectly straight, but for me, that's about as good as I can do. Um, okay, Whew, that was exhilarating. Uh, so let's now try to figure out the formula for a line. And remember, the formula for a line is y equals mx plus b. I'm still, my heart is racing from that. Uh, I was going to have to delete and re-record the video, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, y equals mx plus b is the formula for the line. We all remember the pieces of the formula. Y is our uh, cost. M is our cost per unit of activity. And in this case, it's cost per customer. X is activity level. And B is our fixed cost. Well, when I look at my scatter graph, I've got something here. I've got my fixed cost. My fixed cost is right here. The intercept, and when I say intercept, I just mean the place where the line comes through the y-axis there. The, that point is my uh, fixed cost. And that's what we call our B. And our B in this case is, let's see, 1,200, 14, 16. I'm going to just say 1,300. It's probably a little bit above, maybe 1,320. Let's say, based on my line, it's 1,320. It's about there. It could be higher, could be lower. Who knows, right? It's close. By the way, when I ask students this on an exam, what a nightmare to mark. I get 30 different answers and they still could all be right because their line might be slightly different because it's a visual inspection. That's why it's a pain to ask a question about this on the exam, but I still do. Um, okay, so let's look at our formula then. We know then y equals mx plus, and we've just said our b, is 1320. Again, you might be doing this by hand and doing it on your own. Your b could be different. That's fine. Maybe plug in your B uh, and answer for that one. So Y equals MX plus 1320. Now what else do we know? Well, what we have to do now is look at our line and say, is there a really good point? Is there a point that my line really intersected? And I would say there is for me. And I would say this point right here is my point. And you on your chart will pick a point. And if your line doesn't go through any points, just choose the closest one. Pick whatever you think is the best point for your data. So this point for me is 400 is my x and 2200 is my y. So the point the x comma y is 400, 2200. 
right? Like, and I just, I mean, I can figure out the point by looking back up here and I go, okay, 400, 2200, it's got to be February. Uh, so let's plug in that y and x into our formula. So the y is 2200, the x is 400. So again, y equals 2200, uh, 2200 equals 400x plus 1320. 2200 minus 1320 equals 400x. Uh, what is that? That's 880, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. 880 equals 400x. X equals 880 over 400. X equals 2.2. And remember, our X is our cost per unit of activity, our cost per customer. Our cost is $2.20 per customer. So back to the formula for a line then. Y equals MX plus B. Y equals 2.2X plus 1320. Now let's see how that compares to my high-low method. My high-low method, I had a formula of y equals 2.1667x plus 1300. For my scatter graph, I had y equals 2.2x plus 1320. They actually were reasonably close. So the pros and cons. High-low method, the big pro is you just compute it, you get a number, you don't have to do any of this visual inspection nonsense and draw a line that's kind of your best guess. You're kind of using actual numbers to calculate the line. The scatter graph method, the pro is that you're using all the data. High, low, you just use two points, the highest and lowest. And the highest and the lowest can be your outliers. They can be weird points that are just off in the middle of nowhere. Scatter graph, you're using all of the data to derive your line. The problem, though, with the scatter graph, as we said, is you're doing that visual inspection. You're drawing a line of best fit, and that can really throw off your data if you don't visually inspect well. Uh, the, the idea, though, is that the, the scatter graph is generally thought of as better than the high-low method because it's not just using two data points that could be outliers. You use all the data, and you generally get a better result. But why don't we marry the two? Why don't we use a computational, solid computational method that involves all of our data, not just two points? That's what the regression model does. We'll learn how to use Excel to do a regression line, and that'll be our next video.